Hey guys, our A for Alfonso here with another top 10 video. This video is all about, as if you can see in the video, the top 10 hardest boss fights. The only types of bosses that will not be included are Dark Souls bosses, as they can be made onto a list of their own. Sorry Dragon Slayer, Ornstein and Executioner Smog. Without further ado, let's get straight into it with number 10. The Ghost of Lady Comstock, Bioshock Infinite A game with probably one of the most confusing plots of the 21st century, some core cool game engine, pretty good gameplay, and an interesting world to explore, Bioshock is a piece of artwork with gunplay turned into a video game. But unfortunately boss fights do not shine too proudly with the Battle of Lady Comstock being one of the hardest to have ever been played. Mainly because this boss, boss fight, this boss's weakness, or Lady Comstock's weakness, being you have to take down every single one of her infantry, and then shoot her before she causes more infantry. Most players will not actually realise that they have to do this as her weak, that this is actually her weakness, and so will keep firing at her over and over again, but to no avail. Yes, she may dif be difficult, but she is only number 10 on the top 10 list of most difficult boss fights. On to number 9. <laughs> Sephiroth Kingdom Hearts 2 The main reason Sephiroth is so hard isn't generally, isn't really, be isn't really because he generally is a necessary necessarily a hard boss fight, but because there is no particular strategy to take him down. His attacks are often relentless and unpredictable, as he can throw up black, massive black orbs, can swim with his sword, can use his wings to attack you, and can destroy you with unrelenting combos. If you have plenty of items such as health potions, and potions that, that fill up your drive to the max, which then allow you to release your special ability, and your other party special ability, Choose Beast ability for this one because it will be the best. You could prove to be possible to finish this boss battle. But nonetheless, it ends up on number 9 on the top 10 hardest boss fights in video games. On to number 8. Psychomantis Metal Gear Solid the trick to beating Psychomantis is simple. The Psychomantis will read your mind and often break the fourth wall by seeing what games you have on your PlayStation 2. The trick of beating her though is to switch the controller ports within the controller you're using. So if you're using controller one, you remove the port from the back and place it in the second in another controller, which then means you can't read your mind because you're not using the older one. This trick would be good on newer console games. But unfortunately, due to the, due to the memory system on the PlayStation 2 not being connected to the games, and so the characters on newer consoles such as Xbox One won't be able to read your games, it would be possible. But anyway, back onto Psycho Mantis. Even after moving, even after swapping your controller port, she's still a difficult fight to beat because she has telekinesis, she can fly, and because she just looks evil. And on with that. Next is number seven. Goro Mortal Kombat, the original. Most of the enemies in, when fighting on the arcade version or on, or on the console version of the original Mortal Kombat were difficult, but Goro topped them all. He was, unless you count Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat 2, one of the hardest boss fights in Mortal Kombat, and one of the hardest boss fights in all video game history to beat, because of his strong throw attacks, his punch attacks, his ability to throw green balls, and most important, and most importantly, once he's killed you, you have to start from the very bottom of the ladder of Mortal Kombat fights. Not the hardest boss fight, but one of the hardest, 
in all of more in all of video game history on the next boss fight. <laughs> The Master Hand, Super Smash Brothers series. The Master Hand has always been the final boss boss from the Super Smash Brothers series. As you can tell by its name and its look, it's a giant hand that tries to push you off a um, uh, I forgot what they're called, um, a platform, air yeah, platform, <laughs> or a disc, whatever you want to call it, a big thing in the top. With the newer games, the hand has got much harder. With there now being multiple hands to fight another enemies at the same time. As shown to you now. But the main premises will remain similar. A giant hand will come down. It will punch you to death. And you will have to defeat it. By whacking it off the edge of the world. The master hand may diff be difficult. But it wasn't enough to get into the place of number 5. The Ender Dragon for Minecraft. Although you may disagree with me here, the Ender Dragon is definitely a tough boss fight. As it's one probably the one of the only three in the game of Minecraft, which includes the Ender Dragon, the Wither, and the Elder Guardian. If you count the Elder Guardian, of course. The Ender Dragon is difficult because you have to build up for the fight. You always have to collect the resources in Minecraft, enchant your armor, get good weapons, etc. But then when you get there, you obviously have to have more blocks, jack-o'-lanterns to protect yourself from its army of endermen. If you look in their eyes, they'll kill you. Have enough ladders to climb up to the towers to destroy the massive crystals that keep regenerating his health. And then have enough ammo and health and potions, or at least bow, um, arrows, to be able to then kill the inner dragon. And then safely jump through his portal without dying. But then if you're going for the Elytra in the next one and then killing the mutated Ender Dragon, you have to do that all over again whilst on a massive um, pirate ship covered in Shulkers, Endermen and Endermites uh, with a second mutated dragon and less resources you already had. Fun, right? And if you die, you have to start all over again. Oh, and the Ender Dragon also shoots out massive explosive sort of purple magnet exploding ball things he's resistant to fire and water he can stop in the middle to regenerate health even after you destroy the magic shards and a bunch of other weakness re um, resistances as well so he's nearly impossible to kill good luck killing him then on to number four the Cthulhu from world of warcraft I'm going to admit this here, I'm not a big World of Warcraft player. I don't really know about much of what Blizzard makes, as I've only really played Hearthstone, the card trading game. But when I heard about this boss fight, and, I mean, I know someone who has played World of Warcraft, and has shown me how you complete one of the boss fights, mainly the one that started the Corrupted Blood, blood the Corrupted Blood Plague. Yeah, Corrupted Blood Plague. The Big Bird. Lion thing, I can't remember what it's called. The one that began with Zed. But when I heard about this boss, and I saw him play it, I thought he beat the nuts out of it. But instead, it hit him back in the balls. It's kind of the same thing, but, you know. The Cthulhu is evil. Apparently, from what I know from him, it can take down whole guilds, strong high-level players, and drain the magic of all enemies. And it's shaped like a giant eye with a big black brain thing and has tentacles coming out of it. Nothing else really to say on this because I'm not a great World of Warcraft player, but still. Cthulhu comes in at number four. On to number three. Mike Tyson from Mike Tyson's Punch-Out on the NES. The, the, weak, the main weakness of Mike Tyson is to dodge every single one of his attacks on his first round, and then on the second round to actually try and punch them in. If you even dare block any of his attacks, he just knocks you straight out, so you're pretty much completely doomed. 
Honestly, I'm surprised Mike Tyson had enough brain cells to still be fighting by his time the NES came. Mike Tyson is difficult, yes, like most 1980s boss fights on the NES and other consoles. But the next one you will see is even harder. Going in for number two. <laughs> The final boss from Ghosts and Goblins. Even though the boss himself isn't particularly hard, if when you die when you die of a boss in two hits, because one takes out your armor and one takes out your skin, this boss fight is definitely hard. Honestly, this game can just be considered one of the hardest of all time because of how fast you die and there being no health bar. So I'm just say every single enemy in Ghosts and Goblins is particularly hard. But this boss fight is one of the <laughs> Alma from Ninja Guide in 2004. If you fight Alma, you will die. She has no proper weakness. Her attacks are relentless and in no particular order. Your only best hope against fighting this woman, she demon flying purple lizard thing with blue bobbled hair, is to mash every button, jump around everywhere, and hack her to pieces. If you don't know the Ninja Garden series, you will know they've been hard. Since the very first side scrolling one in the 1980s, they've always been difficult, all the way through to Ninja Garden Black. Difficulty's been toned down a little bit since, but still, it mocks you at least. My name is Afra Alfonso, and I hope you enjoyed this top 10 list. See you again next time.